I've got a video on slicing audio in Studio One, but it's maybe about three years old now, and there's been some added functionality and features since that time. So it is now time to get something updated for this with Studio One. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We're going to start off really, really basic and then move on to more automated and complex ways about, or automated but simple ways to get it done. So basically to start, we can of course use the split tool. So if I press three, then we activate the split tool. And if you have your snap turned on, which is here, you can press N to turn that on and off. Then it's going to snap to whatever quantize value that you have set here. So right now it's on quarter notes. So I'm only able to add cuts at the quarter note divisions. And you can see how that works. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to do undo all of those cuts. And if you would like to, and of course you could change this to be another quantize setting and it's going to snap to that setting. See, we're now we're snapping to half notes. So of course that is available. Um, but if you'd like to make more precise cuts, you can just turn your snap off. And then in this way, you can come in and cut wherever you would like. And now we have our separate audio events. Now, if you're not concerned about making precise cuts and you're happy, the material that you have is going to be workable if it's split at the uh, particular grid setting. Say right now we're on the quarter note. Then what you can do is right click and then under the event section here, you can come to split at grid, click on that, and it's going to chop up your audio based on that quarter note setting. So whatever you have here, it's going to split that event into your quantized value. Now, if you don't want to go into the contextual menu, then let me control Z to undo that. You can set up a shortcut. So I've set up a shortcut. So all I have to do is just press that on my keyboard and it's done automatically. If you'd like to set that up, you can come to studio one, your keyboard shortcuts here, and just in the search field type split at grid, or, you can see that here, select it, and then you can enter a key and assign that. And I'm actually going to go ahead and resplit this up just to show that after we have our event split how we'd like, we can right click and then we can come to the audio section. And then over to the left, we can send that to a new sample one. And then this will be automatically mapped across, we can see by this gray bar that it's the initial key is going to be on C1 and then chromatically uh, the other samples will be placed. If we come to the mapping section, then we can see that here. So now I can use my controller. to uh, trigger the different samples. When we come over to the right here, we can see the individual samples. So I think that, so this may not always work perfectly, especially, especially if you don't make the slices manually and you rely on Studio One, uh, depending on the material that you have. But this, you can hear there's a little click at the end of this. So what we could do is zoom in. I'm just click, hold and dragging down come to this marker and pull that. And that sounds a lot better. So you can always use these markers to clean this up. If you click on the magnifying glass, then it's going to center the left and right marker in on that particular slice. And something else to be aware of is that by default, when this opens up in sample one, the release time is going to be all the way down at zero seconds. So if I just tap on my pad, it's not playing the whole sample through. So you may want to play with the release value to get the sound that you are looking for. Now, if you only want to adjust one sample, when you adjust the release value, this is going to change for all of them. So if I take this all the way up, any one that I select, you can see that the release value has been taken all the way up. 
Uh, let's come back to the, to the first one here and take this back to the initial state. Say there's only one sample that we'd like to fix, then we can click on the edit sample, take the release up a little bit, come out of edit sample, and then now these other ones remain the same. But that first one, I'm just taking note here, but this first one, when we come back to edit sample, we can see that it's the setting is retained just for this one particular slice. Okay, let's get rid of the sample one. I'll shift T to remove that track. And let's, while this event is still split up, we can click, hold and drag to select these, right click, come to the audio again, and we can also send this to an impact. So an impact is gonna be created, and then the slices will be mapped across the pads. So in the same way as I triggered the sample one, I can also do the same with the impact. So you're probably hearing some of the a little clicks in some of these. And again, we can also, so there's a bit of one here. So we can again, click, hold and drag down and make adjustments to the markers to clean that up. And when these slices are loaded into the impact, if I trigger, the whole slice will play all the way through because by default it's gonna be set to one shot mode. If you would prefer to make some adjustments to how it plays back as far as the timing, you can always select the particular pad that you'd like to make the adjustment to, change it to normal, and then you can make really use of the release knob. And then since this is down at zero, it's gonna function the same way as we saw a moment ago in the sample one. So if I just tap and release, then it's not gonna play all the way through. If I take the release time all the way up here. So then you can use this to make adjustments to how you want this to play back within impact. Okay, I'm going to take this back to the default to clear all the pads out. And I'm just gonna do some undos here actually to get back to a full slice here, just to show that if we were to bring in an impact, we could also, while holding shift, click, hold, and drag. So grab the event, hold shift, and notice where it says insert sample, it's gonna say slice and spread it across multiple pads. So once I release, then we can accomplish the same thing. Um, if you want to have Studio One and Impact slice it up for you. So that's something that you can try and experiment with. And we can, let's just remove this and bring in a sample one. So we can also do the same thing with sample one. So if I click, hold and drag, and then press shift, then you see it's gonna slice and add sample. I'll release with the mouse. And now we have our slices mapped across the keyboard as we saw before. But notice that when I created the slices earlier and then brought those in already sliced, they started at C1 and they spanned to about here, just before C2. When, when you use this method, it's gonna slice up. Basically, it's gonna try to find all of the transients. So we have a lot more slices here versus when you choose yourself where you want to slice or whether you choose to uh, slice by the grid setting that you have. So just be aware of that. Now I'm gonna to come to the top and choose default to clear that out, just to show you one other way here. If we click, hold, and drag, 
the entire event and just this is now one event it hasn't been sliced so if i press c3 we can see that playing back the entire loop but we can come over to the right and right click and choose to create slices and this is yet another way that we can go about chopping up our sample or loop within sample one all right let's move on to another method i'm going to close out get rid of that sample run sample one i'll shift t to get rid of that track and let's close out the browser so the bin panel is the next tool that we can make use of we can access that by clicking here up above and the first thing you'll want to do is click on this eye so that we can see the bin markers when they're added because if you don't activate this you won't see the bin markers so we'll turn that on this changes the appearance a little bit and then what we can do is click on the analyze and then bin markers will be added to this event we can even use the threshold here to make an adjustment to how many slices we want by using that then once we're happy with where how many and where they're placed we can then come over to the right here and by default this is going to be on quantize but we want is slice and also if you leave the auto fades checked, then there's going to be small auto fades, 10 millisecond auto fades created for each of these slices. I don't particularly want that in this instance, so I'm going to deselect that. And I don't want the slices to be quantized, so I'll deselect that. Now we can hit apply, and our event is split using the bend panel. With this, I think that the threshold feature is pretty useful and helpful to use if you want to use an automated method and of course we could then right click and choose to send to an impact or a sample one as we've already seen and i'm going to undo all of this to show the final method let's close out the bin panel we can right click and under the audio we can choose to detect transients. Come back to the audio and just below that we have split at bin markers. So that's yet another way. But this is a, li a little bit less flexible if you're going to use those shortcuts. Because it's just going to, we basically have these splits at wherever there's a transient. Except for there's some here. But it didn't apply those. I believe it didn't because it is making use of the setting, the threshold setting here, when we use that shortcut. Here, detect transits, it's going to make use of the threshold setting that's here. So if this were up to 100, then we probably would see uh, markers that were placed here, and here, and here. And these are all the ways that we can go about splitting our audio within Studio One.